legendary star ladder, viewers will be able to increase the Dota 2 prize pool on their own. The base prize pool is $50,000. Each ticket bought through the Dota 2 store will add $2.50 to the tournament prize pool. Support your favorite team and help the development Star Ladder Star Series. Every ticket owner gets an exclusive Weaver set. Six men of Navi like versus audience. Uh, would w will it be hard for you like to play in this uh, in this arena like with all those guys cheering for Navi? No, we we used to it. Like we were uh, <laughs> we were never really the team anyone would cheer for when we first played or when we first entered Dota. So we were always just laughing at it when other teams had the bigger fan base. Like when we were in Sweden, for instance, it's always you know you play at Lions, they're gonna have a bigger fan base, and you come to Star Ladder, and then like the CIS teams are going to have a bigger fan base so you don't you don't really notice it too well when you're in game but when it's like extreme like it is with Navi you just laugh at it so it's it's not that bad but did you notice uh, at the first game uh, people were cheering for you not for alliance uh, yes we did notice that um, and that's always great i mean that's always when you have the fans on your side you just use it for a boost and when it's not on your side then you just you know laugh at it Окей, okay, thank you, good luck in match, и обратно вам слово, Иван. Ну что ж, спасибо, Виталий. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Star Ladder, day number two, season eight, the grand finals. Land finals continue now. I'm LDB on the summit, of course, I'm joined here today by Ben Merlini. Woo. Ben, how you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm uh, having trouble hearing you, but I'm doing well. Hopefully my audio is working. Yeah, you're a little quiet for me as well. I'm sure we'll get that sorted out. But mm. coming up first today, we have Navi versus Fnatic. And Ben, one of these teams are going home. Best of three, first loser's bracket match after today. One's eliminated. Yeah, Fnatic, they looked a little bit shaken yesterday, uh, especially after they had a really good start and just kind of threw it away. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like any huge significant mistakes. Um, some people blamed it on the Roshan, but it was just a lot of small things that added up. Yeah, it definitely was the case. And... I mean, I felt like Fnatic looked the weakest yesterday, but they've had a chance to sleep, uh, and we know they're capable of much better. We've seen mm -hmm. them drop down to the losers bracket in quite a few recent events. Uh, D2L, which you were casting, uh, EMS uh, at some point they did drop down, I believe, or well, made to the grand finals then fell short. But they've had great runs at a lot of recent events, so not a team that you can count out by any means. And Navi also looked a little iffy yesterday. Mm -hmm. Both teams' drafts were mediocre. Yeah, I'd say. they they weren't like amazing. They weren't terrible. By mm, yeah, yeah, they weren't terrible. <laughs> they, they they definitely weren't bringing the level of draft that we expect. But mm. it's a new day, and I mean, you look at these teams and some of their signature heroes and lineups. Uh, we did get to see some Hani and Voker yesterday. We didn't see any Storm. We didn't see any Puck. Uh, we didn't see any Quap. So maybe they changed something up there. Also, what we didn't see was. Era signature heroes. There was no Life Stealer. There was no Luna. They went with his Slark twice, and I imagine coming into today, into today, that's something that they look to change. Are up. we going to see a Wisp in this series? Yeah, that's the other thing. If it doesn't get banned, I think it's the big mm -hmm. question. Do you think Alliance was just either taking it or banning it? They were not giving it away to Fnatic. I think Fnatic will probably ban it out versus. Mm, I think I don't think they have to ban it out versus Navi though. It's not it's not super scary. Navi uh, did pick it yesterday, I believe, in the second game. Mm -hmm. And it didn't didn't really do anything, right. to be honest. So, well, uh, looking at the series, obviously it's Navi's home turf. We saw yesterday they were losing like eleven to one to Sigma. They get one kill and the crowd goes nuts. But uh, in the pregame interview, Notel said that that doesn't really bother him. And, and there were some people cheering for Fnatic. Exactly. So a lot of fans of Dota here in general, and not all hometown mm -hmm. favorites. But Navi definitely have the edge there. We need some sweets to come to Ukraine. Yeah. For Alliance <laughs> Actually, and Germans. We and met some Swedes here last oh night. Yeah, we did. Apparently, they're bussing them in now, so uh, <laughs> they need them to support the Alliance for sure. Where's Fnatic all from? Two from Germany, one from well, Hani's, Finland? Yeah, Hani's from Germany, Finland. Do they have someone? I think Trixie's from Norway as well. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I believe it is. They're like the the hodgepodge of Nordic, Nordic Europe, if you will. Yeah, most of the European teams just like to stay with their own kind. <laughs> their own kind. Their own kind. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> We're getting we're getting danger into dangerous territory here. How's that it's dangerous? Very early in the afternoon. People like people that speak their own language. That's yes. simple. Okay. That's a, that's not racy. <laughs> sure, that's what you meant. Uh, so looking at this matchup, any like players that you think are going to be key key mm. for either team? Anyone that 
performed really well yesterday that stands out to you? Anyone that needs to step their game up? Uh, like, who are your key players for this matchup, if you had I to choose? I think Era needs to step his game up, but I also think it was a lot because of the Slark pick. So he didn't do very well, but it wasn't necessarily his fault. Yeah. Um, I think it was a little bit of a drafting, draft fail. Um, but at the same time, he usually does do very, very well. Mostly on Tiny and Lifestealer, I would say those are his most two successful heroes. Um, aside from that, I think that... Mm, Hani needs to control a little bit more in the mid game. On his invoker, he got an Orchid, but by the time he got the Orchid, the game was already heavily in favor of Alliances. Um, Alliance had like full control of the map, and they had a really good early game too. So when you get that kind of early game lead, you can't just throw it away. You can't just give it back to the opponent like that. Yeah, both games they had, and that's mm -hmm. a great point, is they had that fantastic early roaming, but they could never transition into a push. And part of that was their draft. They just... They didn't have Trixie's uh, Prophet. They didn't have heroes that can take towers that well. It wasn't even that they couldn't transition and push. They couldn't even transition into any sort of map control. Yeah, like that they, as well. They just got kills, but they got outfarmed and they couldn't retain any control right. of the map, which is very unusual. And it just felt like all of a sudden their like their lineup deflated in the mid game. Mm -hmm. And there was the one, obviously the one really difficult Roche fight. Alliance take advantage of the Shadow Shaman War Trap. Yeah, uh, and and using that to great effect. Is Shadow Shaman the hero that might slip into this game? Mm, I don't Neither team really know. runs it yeah. that often. They might just ban it just to be safe, though, because I think both teams saw yesterday how big of an impact that had in the game. Yeah, especially on the Dire side. Mm -hmm. That's where I think we're more likely to potentially see one. Yeah, I think Fnatic needs to be more explosive as a team, um, and both teams could draft a little bit better. Na'Vi, uh, I think... I think kind of the same thing, to be yeah. honest, for Na'Vi. Like, I'd love to see a Havos Lifestealer, same way I think Era Lifestealer, Luna, like more of a signature hero. I mean, we saw yesterday Havos kept on trying to take fights early with Gyro, and we talked to Puppy afterwards, and he said, Gyro needs BKB. He needs BKB. He needs BKB. Until he has BKB, he Do you he think can't fight. that Lifestealer should be nerfed if he's just that powerful that he can just fight without BKB so effectively as a carry? Uh, I think he's a little too strong, but not, not he outrageous. He keeps getting the nerf stick. He's not like ALK level strong. No, he's not, ain't no Earth Sphere. But Are we going to see good. any Alk today? Are we going to see any Bristleback, for that matter? Mm, Bristleback's, like, so-so. He's annoying to deal with, yeah. but he's not, like... I mean, I personally don't like dealing with him, but I don't think he's, like, supremely imbalanced. I think he does a little bit too much without items. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you don't have any items, you can still do a buttload of Quill Spray damage. You still fairly tanky, and you do a lot of right-click damage. And you can't really get BKB versus him because he'll still crush you through it. So it's very hard to itemize against a Bristleback because usually the majority of the rest of the team is magic. And e even if you get physical damage, it doesn't mitigate that much because he just has so much damage coming out. Yeah, so, and that, that's the kind of hero that can really suit Havost well. Bristleback, a hero that can be in the front lines, tank mm -hmm. it up, and soak up damage, charge Do they it. need another support besides Wisp like they ran yesterday? Yeah. Uh, I just felt like they didn't have a great combo. Like, it seems like the teams that draft Wisp generally have a lineup that really suits it. They'll get, like, a Prophet that synergizes really well, uh, or we'll see, like, a more tr traditional partner, you know, like a Gyrocopter, a Tiny. It, Bristol just doesn't have... Neither of those heroes have stunned, so a lot of times you relocate gank with those two and just TP out. Right. Which is the big change with Tether, I guess. Mm -hmm. It does make him, like, not take that much damage, but you can just ignore him for the most part if he's not that farmed. He went pure defensive items, too. He went Blade Mill, Vanguard, Pipe. Yeah. So he doesn't actually do that much damage. If you go, like, Armlet or even Drums, you can chase people down much more effectively. As far as... Both teams, actually. The other thing that really stands out to me is both teams have fantastic jungle play, but we did not see any jungle play. Well, we saw Puffy jungling on Venomancer. I think Fnatic is definitely going to ban Enchantress. No, yeah. no tail. when I was talking to him last time, he was just like, after we played against Navi's Enchantress, we just have to ban it out every single time or use it ourselves. Yeah, and that's the thing is, is no tail plays a good jungle game as well, so <laughs> something that is... Normally what these teams are known for is that early aggression. I remember one and time that I one was... one of the best heroes to do it with. I, I was watching one of their games, though, and they... Now you let Fnatic get Enchantress, and then they did an offensive tri lane with Visage, and Visage just camped in the jungle. And, and he crushed. Couldn't, he couldn't even get to the camp. Yeah, and they just crushed Fnatic. So I think that Fnatic will probably just straight up ban Ench, and... Um, if, if they're not first pick, if they... If they're not first pick, they're kind of forced to ban, ban Ench and Ouch. 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 <laughs> the alchemist. There you go. And, I got uh, confused with the Eng. Well, it was a, it was a later night for some of the Navi guys, uh, especially Kuro and Puppy. But you could see him mm -hmm. rubbing his face. Uh, we had a later night as well. But hopefully they're well rested and ready for this match. So, uh, anything else that any closing thoughts for uh, you? Uh, I can check the odds on this. Try to see if they're doing something on stage, but looks like nothing just yet. 
six, I, oh, I already looked up the odds. It's 67% Navi and 33% Fnatic. I think Again, I don't think it's that one-sided. Yeah. I mean, Fnatic did... We thought that the Alliance Fnatic shouldn't, been, shouldn't have been that one-sided, but Alliance kind of dominated. But a lot of that games. was, the, like we said, the draft. I mean, put Era on... A signature hero. Maybe, maybe they get a wisp one game. Maybe people know that they suck at drafting now. I mean, it's not. It's, it's not, not that every game. It's not that Fnatic has been like, re like tradi traditionally weak versus Alliance. They've actually been traditionally strong. But yeah. like as of this most recent stretch, like the past couple of weeks, past three weeks, they've just been, you know, eh. Do they need more demon uh, and AUI two thousand in their lives? Maybe. The thing is, I yeah. I think that threw them for a big loop because. I was talking to the drafter, and they were like, oh, you know, we tried too hard to, like, incorporate for them um, the first couple games, and then after that, they're just like, whatever, fuck it, we'll just pick what we feel like, and then they just didn't worry too much about things, and then they, they rolled with Shadow Fiend a lot, which Hani apparently begs for a lot, and they never give it to him, except they did give it to him yesterday, and it just didn't work out very well. Yeah, he's, so. it, he really has to, f especially in this patch, teams are so aggressive with early roaming, early pressure, and Shadow Fiend really needs BKB before he can fight, mm -hmm. in most cases. So I think they're like, well, we tried this, and it worked at uh, D2L, but now we don't have the same players, and now our player, I don't know, it, it just... It just confuses them a lot. Yeah, I mean, Era is more of a fighting carry to me, whereas AUI, mm -hmm. very comfortable at just being super Luna, efficient in the jungle. Luna Farmer. Yeah, I mean, his, he was incredibly efficient. Mm -hmm. And not to say that Era can't be, but that's not really his style. Right. Both teams, I expect a lot of blood. I mean, this is going to be a massacre. It should be, right? Navi, Fnatic, these teams like to fight early. They like to fight often. And it was a close matchup at, um, at Dream League. I mean, you look at the stats there. Six plus kills a game for both carries and almost eight for Era in the online stage. That's a fair amount of deaths for a carry, too. Yeah, that, I mean, this kind of shows their style. Mm -hmm. I think it is reflected here in the stats, which is that they're very aggressive offensive carries. Yep. Havost with the Lifestealer. I'm surprised. Oh, has Era played Storm? Uh, it's normally Hani. Yeah. That's kind of a weird one to throw in here. but uh, I think that Tiny... I think a Lifestealer should be here. Tiny is definitely a signature. Mm -hmm. But unless they get the Wisp, we're not going to see it. I like Tiny as a carry. He does, I don't necessarily think you need a Wisp for him. But they're not going to pick up without yeah, Wisp. That's true. I don't think I've ever seen any team. Here's really. the mid matchup, Dendi versus Hani. Both of them rather lackluster performances yesterday, but they're usually very, very strong. They kind of like the same heroes, too. Both of their mags are like, meh. Both of their storms are really good. They're puck. Cause, yeah, he Both of them have... You know, like well, we'll, we'll see Dendi on like Dragonite once in a while, but he's like, Puppy, please don't pick me Dragonite. Yeah, they like the int snowball carries as well as Shadow Fiend. So. Yeah, yeah. I remember there was there's a great Dendi Shadow Fiend game. I think it was back in the Alienware Cup when he went for like Blink Dagger E Blade because he was just face rolling everyone. So mm -hmm. uh, and Hani, same thing. We did we didn't really get to see him explode. But are we going to see Invoker be a hot point of contest? Because Alliance actually, oh yeah, Alliance banned out. No, 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 sorry. Navi banned out Invoker in the first uh, two bands, both of the games versus Sigma. And I think that's very unusual. I'm not sure if we're going to see it again today, but that was probably one of the most interesting parts about yesterday's draft. Yeah. So do we see different drafts, I guess, is the big question. Will we? I'm not sure. I think Wisp and Alk are always going to be points of contest between these two teams. Invoker, it's... I didn't. I mean, it didn't really do that much yesterday, and it got banned out. But I mean, is yeah. Sigma really known for it? Mm, Sigma. Yeah, because Navi banned it out versus Sigma. Both oh, games. Uh, I I get. I, I was reading that apparently they they had a couple of really good games with it in the Pinnacle Dota League, which I did not get to watch. The, mm -hmm. the, it was one of the events Join Dota was running, but uh, I was not watching those games. So apparently they ran it there. But I mean, outside of that, it's definitely a newer newer pick for them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very strange first ban. I think you can just pick Doom if you really want to. Yeah, if you're really that worried about Invoker. Yeah, or you can just pick a Storm. I think Storm can farm his Orchid faster, and he's generally safer. But, eh, we'll see. So, we have all our players in the lobby, guys, for those who are wondering what's going on. Uh, and we should be starting soon. Fly is telling Starladder to disband. What's your prediction? My prediction is... I'm going to say Fnatic 2-1. 2-1. Fnatic 2-1. I'll say Na'Vi 2-1. So we both think it's going to be a close one. Yeah. I Should be closer than yesterday. I feel like the teams were... You know, like that first day of most LAN events, is like the teams are kind of finding their footing and they're not really on their A game. Like Speed Gaming at MLG, great example. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody had those kind of travel issues, fortunately. But. 
Yeah. And who would you bet on if you had a bet? At 60, oh, I definitely 60, bet on 337 odds. Even if you think Navi's going to win, those odds are not that great. 67 33. I think you, you throw a rare on Fnatic. Yeah. Maybe you get lucky. I think most of the times you bet against Navi and Alliance. You should. Yeah, the, the thing is, the teams that are really popular are normally bad bets because they normally have the odds slate in their favor, even if the match is going to be close. Mm -hmm. Mer mad rares with Merlini. Except Navi Alliance. Yeah. Then you have a good bet. And uh, we are loading into the game now, so we should be getting underway momentarily. Uh, any last thoughts, any words of wisdom to the viewers before we hop into it? I'm excited. All this right. It's going to be a good match. It's day number two. The Dota. It's Navi versus Fnatic. Best of three. Game one, the draft just now getting underway. We'll hop into it just in a moment. And here we go. Well, in online stats and, and then into the game. But, yeah, no, it's the early parts of the draft. Not too much to see here as of yet. These stats don't really tell us that much. Navi I mean, I, yeah, gets I, more kills. Yeah. More last hits. But what does that mean? What does that mean, Ben? It means they're slightly better. What is the meaning of a death? If there are slightly more kills and slightly yes. less, less deaths. But that could just be because they go longer games, so I'm confused. And, uh, well, I think we can actually hop into the draft now because I'm seeing some interesting bands already. And, yeah, Enchantress band. That, I mean, you mentioned versus Navi. You just yeah, have they, to ban it. Yeah. You, they're going to ban it each, each game, I think. But I'm... Mm, especially if they're second pick. I don't know if they're going to do it with their first pick because they can just pick it first, but I think Navi can handle Fnatic's edge pretty easily. And um, Yeah, Wisp getting banned out. I mean, these are all pretty much signature bans for both teams, so mm -hmm. nothing too surprising there. And now we're going to see what the, the, the style of this game will be. Navi having the first pick, Fnatic having the Radiant advantage, if you... Uh, or, sorry, Dire advantage, if you will, yeah. depending on the kind of strat they want to go They for. really like the Visage and Venno uh, yesterday. I think we'll probably see one of those, even though it didn't work out for them yesterday. It, the it Visage especially. Does. I feel like the Venno maybe we don't see. Visage is so good, though. Yeah. Yeah, though, the Visage I think we, we should see. We should see? Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, if they don't take it, Fnatic could as well. Yeah, so I think Fnatic will from, take it. From no tail. We'll probably see Visage and Venno picked up in, like, the first four picks here. And then, aside from that, eh. Just waiting. Slow draft so far from both teams. Uh, it is the, the start of day one, but coming up later, we do also have Alliance versus Sigma. That one's going to be a best of three as well. And should be a good game, too. Both teams looking really hot yesterday. Solid drafting, great execution. And there's your Visage off the board for Navi. They'll open it up with a pretty versatile first pick. You, yeah, you just can't go wrong with the Visage first pick, I think. He is extremely strong at babysitting. Very good burst, has stuns, you can scout with them, which I think is probably one of the most important parts, actually, is just being able to scout with the familiars. Uh, yeah, the familiar is very useful. You do have to get level 6, though, and we saw Fnatic is, like, all over the map mm -hmm. from level 1. So while you're waiting to get the familiars... Uh, Getting level 6 is the hard part. Yeah, it is, and it takes a while. And they'll go Venomancer here. Fnatic are a big fan of this here. I, I mean, I mentioned, from No Tail's point of view, it's a support they can do, like, 2,000, 3,000 damage in a team fight, depending on the items and levels. So, mm -hmm. pretty potent response. Supports are the priority so far, but I think after this will be the offlaners. Like Clock and Timber, I think are Clock is probably a pretty hot point of contest because um, both Trixie and Funic play pretty strong Clocks. I don't think it'll make it past the second band phase. Now, to be fair, for both, ooh, uh oh, That's this is the, this is the yesterday. this is the push opening. Maybe you can just ban Pugna though. Yeah, you should ban Pugna. Oh, if they don't learn their lesson from yesterday, then that's just silly. That would just be straight up arrogant. I, I mean, clearly, after yesterday. <laughs> right. And, I mean, you mentioned Funic Signature Heroes, but we saw he's very versatile. Ooh, he played a Hooker. fantastic mix. Hooker in the first draft. So, oh, you can't actually see it on here, but that's what the crowd is cheering for. Yeah, Dendi Invoker. This is going to be good. Sun Strikes galore. Invoker does do well versus Dragonite, though. Yeah. He has the four spirits to deal with the minus armor. He has a ton of magic damage that doesn't even care about armor. He has decent base damage so he can CS. And a decent hero to stop the push, and I love this ban from Navi. They're, they're showing respect for the push. Yeah. They ban the Pugnet. You just have to. Mm -hmm. They should have done it yesterday. They've learned their lesson now, and, well, from Fnatic, Lifestealer will be the quick reply. So not wanting to give Havost a signature hero that's hard to bring down, and the other thing for Fnatic is they don't have great lockdown right now for a life stealer. Uh, the Dragon Tail is decent, but you, know, you can't count on Gale. Could easily be rage dodged as it's coming in and won't affect you once you are rage. So, uh, pretty solid bans all around. 
yeah, Life Stealer is annoying to deal with. They don't, they won't have a carrier for him though, unless they do like a safe lane storm. So I don't think it's as big of a deal as it is usually, especially considering they could take it for themselves with Dragon Knight and um, and Life Stealer. They're both like fairly difficult to shut down in team fights. Both teams deliberating, and you know, you mentioned Fnatic, really the only team here that likes to huddle up a bit. Uh, Mm -hmm. As we see Era poking poking around, but Navi just they're chilling at their chairs. They've been here, done that. They came, they saw, they conquered. Last time at Starlighter, but can they do it again? It's going to be a tough road for both teams. Yeah, I like the Invoker pick a lot, actually. Like, mm, it's it's not only a deny pick against Fnatic. Not that they would run a safe lane DK, mm -hmm. um, but it's just it's something different, I think, and it's very good for its anti push too. Yeah, you just get the one point wax. You have access to meteor and I mean ice wall. A lot of good spells that discourage going Even high. Forge spirit too. Like yeah, forge spirit drawing the creep wave back and incredibly effective. And tornado EMP if you go that route. But and you could split push as well with the forge spirits and with your hero who right clicks quite hard, which means that it puts pressure on them to stop pushing and five manning at you. Yeah, he's a very versatile. And actually, uh, this combination individual. is really strong too. F familiars and forge spirits. Mm. Like they the by themselves, summons. they will push a wave really fast. The what Zeus, do you think about summons? The Zeus strat, as Lysander likes to call it. Oh yeah, the people people think that the mass summon strat are really strong. Like, well, um, especially with how good Necronomicon is right now. Yeah, it just synergizes so well. And pushing in general seems to be the the way to win games, at least early. You need to be able to convert ganks into tower pushes. That's one of the most important things that is often neglected by some teams in the like first 10, 15 minutes of the game. They'll have a lead, like they'll be up like five, ten kills, but they won't have a tower lead, and then they'll they'll definitely lose control from there. Or and that was the story of both of Fnatic's games yesterday. Right. Uh, I think Navi got some towers versus Sigma, but still they were not getting enough. Yep. And we Fnatic was so desperate that they smoke ganked a tier one tower in the top lane. Mm -hmm. And lost like two creep waves in each lane to do it. Yeah, that was that was just that was point pure desperation. Desperation, <laughs> desperation at yeah. that point. Uh, Weaver gets banned out here by Navi. So, I mean, for Fnatic, there's still a Luna, and Luna can be the perfect carry for this kind of a lineup. Great at yeah, pushing, great at I don't know if they want to commit to the push push yet though, because they won't be able to get a Pugna. They but can't I mean, do you, a death profit. You either. can back off and just play the farm game with DK Luna. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily think you want to because the Visage is, I think, stronger, uh, stronger the for the tri lane than yeah. a Venomancer. So I think that Navi can just aggro try against him, especially with the help of Sunstrike. Then I don't think Luna will be able to get that much farm. I don't think it's something they would do right now. If you want to go for it, maybe you get it with like your fourth pick. Mm -hmm. Probably we'll see the offlaner or the next support from Fnatic. Here. I actually nope. think Luna's. Luna. I think Luna's a little bit overrated. Um, she's like decent if you can push a lot, but I mean, I guess Fnatic looks like they're just going all in on the towers, which is. Not bad considering what what they had encountered yesterday, which was just not being able to take any T1s. They took one T1 yesterday, I think, in each of their games. And at this point, uh, I mean, for Havost, I guess the question is, what's he going to play? Because Weaver's been banned by Navi, Life Stealer, uh, as well as Gyro, here banned by Fnatic, and you do see the Luna pick coming out right now. That's uh, that's most of Havost's signature heroes off the board. Mm -hmm. The Bristleback is out there. Not something that we see a lot for him, but it's an occasional option. Eh, he wouldn't be bad. Very deliberate. Very slow draft from both teams, but it is game one. This is this is the big one. You win game one, and you've got your insurance policy. You'll kn you know it goes through games, and you only got to take one of them. Havost, what else can they possibly run? There's Anti-Mage. We haven't seen too much of Anti-Mage lately, but... It's just so... It's just it, in the tri lane, especially, just mm. not the best hero. Yeah, so I doubt we'll be seeing him. And doesn't stop the push unless he gets a really fast battle fury. Right. Mm, At the same time, though, Navi here? don't have great lockdown for an anti mage. Cold snap's pretty good, but that's really about it. Could always just blink out if Clockwork hooks you. Mm, yeah, Havost. What what do you think that Havost will play? I think that's probably the most interesting thing. In the draft, because Fnatic just going to pick like a regular support, I think. Same with Navi, just Rubik or Chen, and then like I something suppose. for Trixie in the off lane. Right. I mean, it could even be a Venomancer for Trixie. Uh, he that used to be his hero in actually in Heroes of New Earth, and they just run it as like a a pure farming Venomancer. We've seen them; they'll do that for him occasionally, uh, and sometimes go aggressive tri lane. But probably not going to be the case this game. Mm. 
Yeah, Havosa's hero pool is actually not that large, I'd say. He yeah, is not as large as, like, Loda, for example. Right. Who plays pretty... I mean, we've seen Havos play a lot of other heroes in the past, but in terms of his recent hero pool, it's it's been more restricted. And, you know, a lot of that may not be because of him. It may just be because Puppy doesn't want him playing certain heroes. <laughs> Looks like Fnatic just has. Oh, a by the way, I, there there was a Chen out there for Fnatic if they really wanted to commit to push, and that would have been a very scary push at that point. But they go, they choose to go for Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden is a safer pick. That now they still could run a farming Veno and get another support, and maybe it could be a CM Chen. Uh, I wonder if Navi's going to be worried about that. That's like, sure they have decent counter push on Navi, but that's just an outrageous amount of like five man power. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we'll possibly see like a Lich last pick, like Sigma did yesterday, and just do dual lanes. For Fnatic? Yeah. It could be like Lich, Venno in the off lane and... Crystal Maiden, and Luna. Yeah. That, that's pretty strong. They might do that because like this this draft is very similar to what um, what Sigma did yesterday. And it worked versus Na'Vi, so why not just use the same strategy if they're not aptly prepared for it? We actually see a Bane coming out here for Na'Vi, and I wonder what this, you know, this is this setting up for maybe a Marana, like not a true hard carry it's for Havos? Just straight up Bane. Or just a Bane pick for Fnatic. the hell of it. Uh, Havos has played, had, has played it a little bit. And good ban by Fnatic. They, they removed the Marana uh, right now, as we can see. Yeah, Bane is, eh, he's, I don't really think he's that good here, because he's not good versus push. He doesn't have any AoE, and they have many ways to interrupt the grip. Um, I guess it is some anti BKB insurance because Navi doesn't really have any right now, but that's that's about all he provides. We'll see what Fnatic wants to do for this last pick. Is it going to be a Trixie Veno or is it a pure support? They definitely have their options here. Both teams really low in reserve time. You can't see it on the screen here, but Fnatic has two seconds left and Navi has three seconds left. Yeah, like I mean, as we've been saying, it's been a longer draft. And not only that, but for each individual pick, that timer has been going down nearly all the way. They know the importance of this game, number one. And Fnatic now getting ready to head back to their seats. They've made their last pick. We'll see it here in just a moment. And it's actually not what I would have expected. Definitely not what I would have expected either. And it's a Darkseer. How about that? Darkseer, we haven't seen in quite some time. He keeps getting nerfed patch after patch vacuum, plus five seconds, plus four second cooldown. Um, Etc. But he's still a really good hero. Um, he's still a really good five-man offlaner. It's just that he takes so much longer to come online than like most other offlaners in this patch. Mm. Clockwork, as soon as you hit six, you can just go rolling. I mean, for Darkseer, you really need 11, 12, depending on when you level up your level two ball uh, and your mech before you're fully engaged. And Navi <laughs> rounded out with a Kunkka. The Kunkka Admiral. is a good com combo with Bane. I think that a Shadow Demon probably would have been better um, instead of Kunkka, just because he provides a little bit more AoE and he is very good defensively against Eclipse and Dragon Knight, but looks like they are more comfortable with the Bane. Kunkka provides a ton of AoE for team fights too, so that is something that Bane lacks, so I think it's it's a pretty good pickup. I have seen Havos play it on occasion. Yeah. And they can... It's also to see how they can fight a lot, and you actually look at Navi's draft, the longest cooldown they have is, what, Fiend's Grip, probably? Which isn't that bad. Mm -hmm. So Fnatic just going with the tried and true. Dragon Knight, Venno, Navi going with something very new, I'd say. Kunkka and Invoker on the same team? I don't remember the last time I've, ever, I've seen that. And you can hear the teams being introduced now. And of course, that was the crowd cheering for Navi. So we'll start with them. We'll start with the hometown boys. It's going to be Funic handling the clockwork. Puppy on the Bane. Kuroki taking up the reins of the Visage. Not going to be a Puppy Visage today. And I got to say, based on yesterday's performance, I do think Kuroki's Visage is better. Dendi the Invoker and Havos the Kunkka. Yeah, Kuroki usually plays a Visage. Yeah, he's, uh, the, he's more used to it. Mm -hmm. And Fnatic, uh, we see Fly on the Support Crystal Bait and Trixie on the solo Darkseer. Hani, solo mid on the Dragon Knight pulled a couple of Tangos. No Tail. Uh, all supported up. He has a smoke on him on the Venomancer and Era on the carry Luna. We saw Navi go with a very early smoke gank into the offensive uh, tri lane, but it looks like they won't be doing that this time. Uh, Invoker, probably the weakest hero at level one, so I don't really blame them. Yeah, and I mean, the rest of these heroes aren't amazing at level one. Clockwork's okay, Kunkka's okay, so neither team looking to get aggressive here early on. Fnatic going defensive tri lane and for Navi, it appears they will be doing the same as well. Or maybe dual lanes or roaming of some kind, but definitely nobody going aggressive early on. 
So it'll be a passive opening, but as we head towards the mid game, once Navi get their level six on most of these core uh, core heroes and even the supports, that's when Navi will look to start fighting, start split pushing more, and getting more aggressive around the map. They don't need to fight though. I think the pressure is more on Fnatic to do so. I think Kunkka um, can like one shot a team. I yeah. guess well, if you get like sufficient farm, Luna's like decent and she has Eclipse too. But I think the BKBs are going to be really important for Fnatic. So they may look for BKBs on Luna and DK before they start pushing. On the side of Navi, they don't really need BKBs to start fighting too. So they we may see Navi pressure Fnatic before they get their BKBs, or we may see Fnatic just use utilize their strong pushing lineup to. Uh, limit Navi's farm. And the one thing Fnatic does have the edge in is in their ability to flash farm in the jungle. Especially once Dragonite hits level 2, Luna gets some points of Glaives, and even Darkseer, the one thing he excels at as an offlaner is farming. Whereas you look at something like Clockwork, he's not going to be able to keep up in the mid game. So Fnatic could try and take this game simply by uh, just, uh, you know, basically snowballing a gold advantage. Trixie advantage. doesn't have Surge at level 1. He actually uh, already skilled Ion Shell, but he did have a good block, so the range creep will be end ending up dying first, and if he had gone out, he I'm pretty sure he would have died, especially with Puppy having a DD. But both actually auto-attacking the wave, and I guess preparing for the double uh, the, the double pull-through here, although Kuro's kind of missed the pull, so this lane's going to push. Yep. That's a lot. You know, interesting that he would be aggressively auto-attacking it as well. Yeah, that's something that you don't see very often. And Trixie's going to get a really easy level 2. I think that's the hardest time for Darkseer, like in between 1 and 2. Because if you get Surge at level 1, you're not going to get any creep kills. And you can't really get experience. But And this tri lane can definitely kill him. Yeah, they him. can kill him very easily. Sleep, Torrin, and then you follow up with the Soul Assumption. That is an easy first blood. Yeah. Or Looking at the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. You can just Grave Chill him too and just sleep him as soon as he surges. And then he can. he's going to die too. So he Trixie's not going to be able to survive. And looking at the other offlane, this Clockwork offlane, he's up against a Luna, uh, as well as a Venno. Not as scary of a dual lane early on for first blood. And you can always just cog the creeps, bring them back. You know, the one option for Trixie here is just to go woods and abandon the offlane. But so far, trying to keep some pressure on Havost. Not really working that well. Havost 8 and 3. His CS is not suffering, so maybe Trixie should just go Woods. Honey is doing really well, man, too. 11 and 1 compared to 8 and 1 in, on Invoker. Invoker going with the uh, Quaz Exhort build. 1 point in each already with the 4 Spirits and the Sun Strike in case they want to go for an early kill. There's the yeah, haste. That's, that's the other thing we didn't mention. And this is a big haste run for him. It's an easy level 2. Mm -hmm. Unless Navi catch him with a perfect combo, but I don't think they have the burst yet. The Visage is only level 1. And has gone for Grape Chill, like you mentioned. Yeah, he Trixie needs level 2 like ASAP, though. He's hurting compared to Funic. Funic doing a little bit of creep pulling of his own. Yeah, the key is really the offlaners for this game. Mid, I, I'm like you said, Hani's doing really well, but it gets, the matchup gets harder as Invoker levels. Uh, once you're at level 6, it gets a bit easier, I suppose. But just and it also depends on the runes, too, if Hani gets any. Yeah, so far it was just the one haste for Trixie, who has it level 2 now in the offlane. And well, it's a slow one early on, Ben. Nobody looking to get aggressive. Except for Hani, who's just strutting up on Dendi here mid. Trixie trying to leech some experience from the neutral creeps. In terms of CS, both carries relatively even. 16 and 5 for Kunkka, 15 and 6 for uh, the Luna. And then we see both mids relatively equal too. So, so, so Trixie does abandon the offlane. He heads jungle, he heads woods, and he should... I mean, this is just the unfortunate thing really about... Navi having the better defensive tri lane to punish the offlaner, and Clockwork also just being better at getting levels. And There's that a smoke. First smoke of the game. Navi are going to get aggressive. They'll look I, for a first I think Trixie here. probably should have left earlier. Yeah, he took a while to decide to leave. I mean, that's like two stacks in the jungle that he missed. Mm -hmm. uh, or at, was this team actually stacking for him? His team was he, stacking for okay, him. Okay, so he didn't miss too much then. And they're wrapping around now. Hani, this could be our first blood for Navi. Puppy lurking. He's going to go right in. There's your sleep to set it up. The follow up could be there. The cold snap, the sun strike. No, he's already, he's still got the sun strike available. Hani dropping fast here. Kuro doing a lot of damage. Soul assumption comes through. First blood for Navi. He won the woods. They might get two here. They found Fly. Funix isolated him. Not done yet. The cogs come through, but the Gale as well. Who's going to drop first? Trixie joins. Sun strike comes in. See ya, Fly. Two to nil. Funix should perish here on the return. Maybe not. Kuro strutting up. So too is Puppy. Two to nothing, and they get out. Great movement early on from Navi. I'm surprised that Hani didn't stun the Venomancer. He was like standing right next to him, but he didn't stun. Maybe if he like fogs the 
uh, soul assumption that maybe he gets away, but that was a very well executed gank by Navi. And that's the thing about Darkseer. Oh. Like as soon as you go to the jungle, your su their supports will roam. And you mean the uh, the the visage? I visage, guess. yeah. yeah. Well, Honey end up ends up going down, and yeah, like you said, Navi a team that loves to roam, and it was the second that they saw Trixie leaving the lane mm -hmm. or sensing that he wasn't there, they said, "Let's go gank," and very strong early roaming for them. Fnatic have the ability to roam, but have not chosen to do it yet, and now they'll make their first move of the game, rotating through the top river, storming towards mid, getting ready to go on Dendi here, but Dendi, great positioning. Well, not so great now. Now he's caught. Dendi should go down here. There's your Nova. He does Ghost Walk, but sentries are there. They're ready. Dendi down. Two to one, your score. Great return kill from Fnatic. Yeah, that's a very important kill for them. And oh. now they can transition into a lot of tower damage. This is the power of the Dragon Knight pick. Yeah, he's still really low level though. He can come back pretty early. Havos is actually going for an early Midas too. He's gone for the one two two build. Midas two and X. rush. This is definitely not something you see very often. Yeah, I think he can get away with it. There was one game in Star Ladder. It was like a, I don't think it was a major match, which just a group stage game, but where we actually saw a Battle Fury rush on Kunkka. Something you normally only see in pubs, but here comes the wraparound. Fnatic looking for more. The ward to start. Now the Gale to follow. Flies found him. One Frostbite. Funnic will go down, but the Cogs keeping him out. The ward not doing enough damage. He's going to live. What a Cog from Funnic. Maybe not. One more right click. He's low. He's low. But he bottles up, and he will live. Dead. Great. Great Cogs. Great hero to dodge that gang. No Tail got hit by one of the corner Cogs, though. He was trying to run around it, but just barely got hit and by fly it. could not get in range for a frostbite that yeah. was really unfortunate mm -hmm. they also rotated honey there they were expecting to get that kill and take the tower but without the kill the tower even if it falls not going to fall very quickly here now the boat torrid x all of it thrown out of trixie bottom lane but he runs south he dodges the boat not gonna matter still going down and the midas is online for a boast it's been online for 40 seconds meanwhile top they also find a kill they bring down luna and uh, the trade there uh, is the clockwork from Funic. Killing the Luna is really important for Navi right now because Honey's already died. All they need to do is keep Luna down and then they can just delay Fnatic's 5-man for a while and then they just farm it up with the Midas on uh, Kunkka. And it looks like Navi may actually take the first tower of the game on bottom lane. It seems like Navi's playing a bit greedier here. Going for the early Midas on the Kunkka especially and Dendi will probably... Well, actually, maybe he's rushing four staff. He... He does tend to skip Midas more than other Invoker players, I would say. Yep. With the way the pace of the game is going, though, and with the early lead that Navi has, they can get away with it. They're not scared of the push. I, I would like to see a Midas as well from Dendi, but yeah. I mean, you can't argue with Force Staff or anything. They see the OBS ward on top, Puppy smokes and D wards it. And now Funix here. He's This could be easily two supports dead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Funix not nope. six yet. Puppy trying to bait here. Now Funix has been revealed. Oh, he needs one creep for it. Now he has it. Will he dive? No. That was that was unfortunate, really. I thought he was six. That was a weird time to smoke right before he hits it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they thought Puppy would be able to kill that creep in time, but gets revealed and won't amount to too much. Yep, maybe they thought that the supports were going to roam mid and get but an easy kill on Arrow without his Eclipse. Also, not only did Arrow die, but he used Eclipse. Yeah, and here we go. Hook shot in from Funnick, but slightly off the mark. Now he gets scaled. He could be in a lot of trouble. Arrow running into the cogs yet again. But Lucent Beam's there. They surge him up. Iron Shell deployed. Will they dive? Sunstrike comes through. Hits him, but not enough follow-up. Meanwhile, mid, they try to make a go here as well. But Dendi, the power of the Forge Spirit draws the creep wave off the tower. And now the push is really delayed. But in comes Havos, struts up, boat, torrent, all of it thrown out. And Hani probably going down here. The boat's going to connect. Even with the cold step, isn't enough damage. One more right click. He goes down. This is nice rotation from Havos, too. Havos is one of the more aggressive carry players. And that was just perfect timing for that. Being able to prevent Fnatic from getting any tower in the first like 12 to 15 minutes of the game is going to prove to be incredibly useful if they play this greedily. You know, it's funny. It's <laughs> We said it might be a passive lading stage, but definitely going to be an aggressive mid-game. And it seems the mid-games come a bit earlier, right as everyone starts at level 6. And speaking of key levels, uh, we should probably actually check the hero levels chart. All of the core heroes on Navi are level 6 right now, and they have a big experience advantage here. 2,500, level 7 Visage. In comes Hani. But no boat here, so Navi won't look to contest. And they get the tower. First tower to Navi. That's very important for their lineup. This is very bad for Fnatic, too. If they're not taking any towers down, they're going to fall really far behind. And their lineup should be taking early towers, but they just can't seem to do it. They try and go to Vost here, but he's pretty tanky. He's got a boat. Gale coming through as well. The Sunstrike's there on fly. Not dead just yet. One more clear. Brings him down with Kuroki's assistance. 
There's your sole assumption. And Hani may die as well. Kuro's going to get a double kill here. And now it might be three down. Oh, this is bad for Fnatic. This is very bad. Eight to four. Three for one. Not a trade the Fnatic one. Yeah, they are just falling apart. Not done yet. They're going to find the Luna here. Stop. It's going to be a four for No. Ayla turns it around. Lucid Beam and Stick Charges. Great reactions there. And a much needed turnaround. Sunstrike. Oh, ho, ho. It took him that long to kill a Kunkka with just Stout Shield and a Midas and Magic One too. This is very, very bad for uh, Fnatic. They need to start taking towers, they need to start grouping up. Uh, they also need a mech out on Darkseer, but he's also going for a greedy build himself. He's going for the Midas. It's a pretty, it's a fairly late Midas as well. He did back off for Bottle, which is uh, definitely delaying it a bit, but... Yeah, Trixie, a late Midas. I mean, their lineup does go pretty late, but nobody else is being greedy on this lineup. Just the Darkseer. And mm, they need to be on the same page, either all taking towers together or all playing greedy together so they can out-greed. And they're kind of doing a little bit of both. But we'll see how it pans out. As for Na'Vi, great start. And, you know, it's it's like we talked about. They can fight often. Fiend's Grip, almost cooled down now. The boat's always ready, pretty much. And I imagine Na'Vi's just going to continue to pick these fights. They don't need to sit back and farm. They certainly can. But every time Fiend's Grip and Hulkshot are up, I mean, that's an opportunity for an easy kill. Yep. Fnatic looks like they may be starting the group up right now. They know that this this early game is just not going their way. 3,000 gold or experience lead for Na'Vi. Same with the gold lead. And... It's just their strength of their lineup. If they're not taking towers early, they're not utilizing the strength of their lineup, and if they wanted to play greedy, Dragonite is not necessarily the pick for that. Sunstrike is under the Roche pit, just scouting to see if Fnatic is trying to sneak it. And they can Roche, although it would not be that quick at this stage of the game, but not doing it. Navi grouping up mid, sensing that this is the time for them to get aggressive. Era it. from up Oh up. boy. Era spots him out. Should be able to retreat. There was a Fiend's grip there, but that was a not the best time to engage. It was important for them not to get wrapped around. But by the way, not a great time for Navi to fight because Funic does not have TP gold and uh, is trying to farm it up top right now. Yeah, it was smart by Puppy though. If they engage with a Venomancer Gale or just a Surge uh, Dragonite and get a stun with a wrap around an Eclipse, it's um, pretty easy to probably, win. Probably, for yeah, two, three heroes dead at that yeah. point. So even though he got a smoke revealed, it was still important information. Uh-oh. They're looking to make a go here on the top lane. Puppy comes in, but he can't get in range for a Fiend's Grip. Hookshotting that is suicide, and they will not go for it. Wisely, they back off. Yeah, now they're just going to pressure mid, though, as Fnatic. soon as that TP happens. Look at top. this. Five heroes rotate top. They want to take their first tower of the game, and it's well overdue, but I don't know if they're going to get it. There's a glyph here for Navi. They've got a great tower defense lineup, especially having the Invoker. Dendi has one point in Wex already. Which means he's got access to the big They know AOE there's smoke. Spells. They know there's smoke. The, there was an invis rune here. He had it scout, scouted out with a four spear, and someone just picked it up, and it just disappeared. So a lot of wasted time smoke. from Fnatic at this point. Yeah, I don't even know if they take this tower. They may take this tier one, but Navi already marshaling the defense. Four heroes rotate top. The lone hero who's not is supposed. He backs off for treads, a bracer, and this is a very tanky Kunkka. Normally you see phase boots, but going treads means. Especially with the boat, he's going to be very hard to bring down. Navi was expecting a smoking from this direction, though, since they knew that they were smoked, but Fnatic not going that route. That would have been very risky for them, too. Although it's slightly okay, slightly better for Fnatic to take uh, fights outside of creeps because of Eclipse, but they have a few summons. They have the boat to tank through it, although Havos is not even there. He's just AFK Farmy Bottom, and uh, getting the Shadow Blade will probably be the key item for him so he can initiate the fights, because... I mean, they have good initiation, but it just gives them a very low cooldown one. Every time you've got X torn up, you could go. But yeah, we'll see what he goes for. He just going drums, I think. Well, yeah, yeah, drums first, probably, since yeah. he got the Bracer. We'll have to wait and see. Navi group up top. It's their turn to push, and Fnatic now trailing by 4,000 gold, and none of their key teamfight items are up yet. Mech is not coming. Uh-oh, oh, Hani's low bottom. Could go down here. No. Sunstrike? Uh, already used, already used. Not going to be enough damage. And now they're going to pressure the tower. They know no, the they Hani's go in low. bottom lane. They've oh got an Eclipse. So Havos will go down. No, defensively set by Puppy. Now the grip on Hani. He's turning it around. Havos lives, but finally goes down. Era, can he get the double kill here? This Bane is too strong. Is he going to fall? One more Lucid Beam. Yes, he will. Not strong enough. So I'm strike the oh! oh, boy. Trixie on top. Meanwhile, top lane, they have gone in there as well. And they bring down Trixie's Darkseer. Dies again. He just got his Midas, but he pays with his life. And now Navi's second tower of the game. Will there be a trade here? Nothing for Fnatic. They don't get the tower. Oh, this is bad. Bad for Fnatic once again. Unless they take this tier one mid. But they won't. 
They're just not able to get towers off of these fights, unfortunately. Yeah, there's always just something that's off that's happening to them. Oh, like, looks like it will actually go down, but Kuro may be able to deny this. This will be a big deny if he pulls it off. Nova throw out of the creeps. He's waiting, and he won't get it. Tower last hit goes to Fnatic's. They really needed that goal. Yeah. First tower of the game for them, though. This Darkseer pick has just not really been working out for them, too. I'm not exactly sure why they picked it, because I don't think their team fight was lacking that much um, before. And he just, he, like, we still have not seen Darkseer really contribute at all to this game, and it's just the nature of the hero. Generally, he's not going to do much until the 15 to 20 minute mark. Yeah. And and it's going to be longer because of the Midas. And he's not even going to have his mech yet until 20, but here goes the Roshan attempt. But there's m s just spam pinging coming out from Navi. They know. Oh, they know what's is, up. This is not a good place to fight. This the is what Fnatic always does, though. That when they're behind, they try and go for a Roshan attempt, and it's very, very predictable. And there's an X-Torrent boat here. This could be bad. Fnatic, if they clump up now. Oh, no. Arrow almost ran into it. The boat's going to connect on No-Tail. He's low, but he's not dead. He gets surged and will survive. In Arrow's fact. trapped in the pit, though. Oh, no. Low. Puppy's trying to bring him down. The Familiars are working on him as well. Era. Loose and Beam stands his ground, won't live though. Funnick blasts his head off Puppy, still being hit by Roche. Roche has no mercy. Two for one so far, and they're looking for more Torrid, but two! Havos delivers, big Torrid from him. The Admiral in the clutch, still standing strong. He'll bring down another, that's four heroes dead. Make it five, Hani's trapped, surrounded. The Dragon is no match for the birds. They keep on working on him, another Torrid. Will he connect? Nope, yep, nope. <laughs> Slightly off the mark. I don't think it's going to matter, though. Four step forward, but Denny frostbitten. Stun held in position. Do they bring the Crystal Maiden down? Not quite the team wipe, but very close. Oh. Oh, boy. He almost connects on Hani. Very nice movement from Hani there. Just, But still another bad fight for Fnatic. And just too too risky. Really too risky to be forcing that. Yeah, they needed, like I think, like a wall of wards up the they hill. They didn't even too. have Eclipse in that fight. It was on cooldown. Yeah, Arrow was just locked in the pit by himself. So they need a wall of wards so that Navi can't actually run into the pit. Like, Puppy was just in the pit, <laughs> locked just like with Arrow. Her, yeah. rampaging around with the visage familiars. Yeah, he, he just <laughs> didn't really care, which they, Fnatic cannot let him get in that position, though. But that, that was also a nice initiation from Kunka, splitting them up, Arrow onto the left side, and all the people on the right side had to go right because they had to dodge the boat. Fnatic go back in now. This time they have a medallion. It will be a bit quicker. And they might get this Roche. They have Eclipse, too. If they Navi get it, if it was a fort for two and they get it, I think it's worth it. But if they give up a bunch of kills to take this, not worth it. Funnick's going to go for the Roche and steal. It's low. Can he hook it? Nope. Not going to try. They're also still really far away from their BKBs. Dragon Knight and, Era, uh, and Luna both only have their um, Ogre Clubs and not enough for their hammers yet. And they have a Blade Mail up on Clockwork. So even like the next five or ten minutes, even with the Aegis, I think Navi can still pressure Fnatic a lot. And they can take a fight as well. Having an Aegis on Luna is nice, but still no BKB. Uh, this Luna dies once, she's dying twice most likely. So I don't feel like it's a game-changing Aegis pickup by any means. Yep, Trixie still working on that mech. Headdress and Buckler picked up Beck Buckler Recipe. So so he's still a chainmail and a mech away. And Fnatic will be really strong in about five minutes' time if Navi doesn't apply pressure. They'll have two BKBs up and a mech. So I think Navi, they, they know that. They know that they're really strong right now and relative to Fnatic, even with the Aegis. This is the time to force the issue. They almost have the Shadow Blade on Havos, which is a, quite a big pickup. Makes it really easy to find that initiation, but they'll push for it now. And in fact, it is being delivered on the Courier. Here comes the... And this is the power of the Familiars and Fort Spirits. You can pressure multiple lanes simultaneously. Oh, they might get Era here. We see Puppy already rotate to the left side, and Era's out alone. If he gets caught here with a TP from a team, that's the Lost Ages. Yeah, but Puppy has no backup, and Era not going to go for the tower. Still the tower stand. This could be a tower deny. In fact, Puppy drawing the aggro off, but the catapult will bring it into deny range. Will he get the tower deny? I think he's going to. And that will give Navi an even bigger gold lead. Already up by 5k. I mean, it'll go down a bit here, but once they take their next corresponding tower... Oh, does he get the deny? Yes, he does. And also, it looks like Invoker's going for a Necro book. This is probably one of the first times I've seen Invoker go Necro. It's, it's, it's not It's really bad. good with Exhort Invoker, it's, though. It's okay against BKBs, though. I'm surprised that... Copy. Ooh, copy. Boy. Punished by Fnatic with a three-hero rotation. So, the, the Invoker Necro book, you were saying. Yeah, it's not that great for BKB, and they don't have any invis, like a Potom or something like that. But it is very nice for split-pushing pressure. Um, so. it, and it kind of seems like that's the way they want to go. Shadow Blade on Kunkka. I mean, it's a right. pretty common item for him. But occasionally, we do see like a BKB rush from, say, Xiao8, if he wants to teamfight more early on. But Shadow Blade on Kunkka, Necro Book. And having familiars, they already have... By the way, 
Kuroki already has Ag's treads at 90 minutes. This is a very... He's the third most farmed here in the game, so... 5-0 and 5. Hats off to him. He's played a hell of a visage so far. Yeah, he has. Puppy was feeding familiars yesterday, but Kuroki not doing anything of that He really sort. was. I mean, that was a lot of familiar gold he gave up. Yeah. And now having three, just can AFK farm the jungle and scout... Uh, well, not for Roche, but just scout where Fnatic are in general around the map. Navi's in a really good position right now. Uh, doesn't look like they're going to be trying to contest uh, while Fnatic has the Aegis up. They need to take this T1 down, though, before the next Roshan respawns, which is mm, at least another uh, five minutes. Oh, boy. Well, here's Sunstrike in bottom lane. They've put out no tail. Havos nails him, and down he goes. Beautiful combination once again from Navi. X Torrent, Sunstrike follow up. Easy pickings. They're going to need a gem soon. Fnatic likes to pick up an early gem and. It's, ha it's going to be hard to hold on to it a gem this It's going to be though. really hard. But Fnatic, they, they need a five man and they need to uh, get their BKBs and try and take Navi in team fights. If they try and just roam around by themselves and just farm up, they're going to get ganked by Bane. They're going to get ganked by Kunkka. They're going to get ganked by Invoker or Clock. It's just not going to happen for them. So they can't outfarm that route. They have to try and outfarm Navi by just taking the head on in team fights and making Navi feel threatened if they want to apply pressure. And Navi clearly does not feel threatened. Just dead. Dendi and Havos chilling past the river by themselves. Three heroes from Fnatic just hanging around trying to stop that. Top lane, they, they will go in here. Hani has picked up an Invis rune. If they get this kill, he'll be really close to DKB, and they'll go in now. Dragon Tail to start. Gale to follow, and the wards not enough. He's just going to TP out. Great reaction from Funic. <laughs> Nicely done. Second time they failed on a gank against him. Fnatic wasting a lot of time around the map right now. They're yeah. just like huddled. They're not stacking. They're not able to do that many ancients. And yeah, sure, they have the Roshan, but the, this game is slipping away from them. It's slipping away from them fast. Gold lead about 6,000 in favor of Navi, but they still have the Midas on Kunkka. They have the better split push, and their heroes are way more farmed. We see the BKB. Uh-oh. Uh Fly. Three familiars have found him, but middle lane, they're going in on Kuroki. Maybe Kuroki's the one who's caught out here. Triple familiar stun. Beautiful micro. I think he still goes down here, though. Has the stick charges low cogs are there not enough but it takes five to bring down the support visage they're getting kills but it's it's not enough they're it's such a big investment not just farming. to kill a support right and uh, sure you kill him he's still gonna go farm your jungle anyway with familiars if he wants to but Fnatic not rotate bottom. They've got one BKB up on arrow. They have a ward here. They have vision. Of, they have full vision on Fnatic. Oh, Gale's going to fly. It's not going to connect. But on the backside, that one did connect. Funic drills fly with a hook shot. And now Funic, uh, once again, will just TP out. They can't do anything about this guy. <laughs> Another great performance from Funic. And he had a sensational one, even in defeat yesterday to Sigma. That was a really, really good ward, though. They anticipated that they were going to come that route and just they were able to take the tower, although it got denied, and get a uh, free kill out of that. Yeah, this ward is really good if you want to apply pressure in the bottom lane. Like, you're not going to help you too much for Roche necessarily, but it shows you if they're wrapping around through the secret shop, uh, if they're coming up the river and really taking advantage. Now the Necro 3's out, and look at Kuro. He's just backdooring the tier 1 mid. He'll force the TP reaction. Now the triple familiar stun comes out, but No Tail's not getting these familiars without some backup. Yep. That ward is also really nice for Ancient Stacks, too. We see Luna and DK both able to take Ancient Stacks if they ever get the chance, but they have not been able to. Yeah, and that's, you know, we talked about AUI 2000 standing in for this team. You know, it just feels like a very different kind of Luna from Fnatic. Their lineup really built around the five-man, going for the early BKB. No Helm of the Dominator, no early Yasha, and certainly no early Midas. And the Dragonite going for, like, your standard BKB treads, but the result is... They're not playing greedy, and Navi's just winning in terms of the farm war. Yeah, sometimes you just have to take risk and be like, okay, well, they can't be everywhere at once. Um, but Maybe one of us dies, but the yeah. other one can keep on farming and stacking. Right, and that's what Navi has been doing, right? They, like, create space by dying, which you don't... I mean, deaths aren't, aren't good, but sometimes they're okay. <laughs> Learning with Merlini, deaths aren't good. Well, people tend I, to view yeah, deaths I, as, like, dying... They're so negative towards deaths, but dying as space creation is... Nav what Navi has been doing very successfully in the last five minutes. Now, there's a difference between space creation and feeding. Nice right. tower deny mid from Era, though. Well done. In the face of Necrobook as well as Double Forge Spirits. Looking at the net worth charts, Luna is really far behind now. 2,500 behind the Kunga. And now we'll go for the Helm of the Dominator next, which means then he can try and start stacking Ancients, but it's just very slow. Yeah. He hasn't used his BKB yet, so he could have gotten his Helmet Dominator and had his Helmet Dominator and BKB done right now, too. So, the Fnatic is just not playing greedy enough. And or, they're not getting the stacks off playing either. greedy, though. That, that stack did not go in the yeah. end. Very unfortunate here. 
Navi, it looks like they're going to be playing the starving game, though. They do have this ward. It is not going to be easy warded. It looks like by Fnatic and... Yeah, Navi, they're just split farming. We see Kuroki farming top. We see Dendi farming the Ancients. Funny farming the jungle. They just have full vision of Fnatic. Very, very comfortable in where they're going to go. And now they see the push coming, too. I really like this style of play a lot better from Navi. It, it seems to suit them, you know. And Fnatic, it feels like they've had their their preferred strategy taken away from them. They didn't get the Wisp, they didn't get the Trixie Prophet. They were not allowed to go for the Era Lifestealer or Weaver. Uh, I think they actually banned the Lifestealer, but they were not allowed to go for the Era Weaver. And their ability to split push and just win in a, a farming war has really been stolen from them. And this is the team that, right. I guess you could say, invented Rat Dota. Or I guess Virtus Pro were the ones who invent the name, but Fnatic the team that pissed them off so much they came up with it. But we're not really seeing it from them here. And now the pushers are getting pushed by the necro books in mid and the four spirits this tower is already dead and, and the positioning top. is quite good here from navi they can just run up the ramp and fanatic smoke gank may not amount too much but they're going to plot a, di a different course they'll head to the left side and they're going to come up the ramp will dendy be waiting for them no he's not they're gonna breach high ground safely here fly leading the charge he'll be the sacrificial lamb for sure unlikely to live after this initiation but could be well worth it. They'll find two, but a great deafening blast. What a reaction from Dendi. Then a force death away. Instantly, they'll retreat. Now the cogs from Funic. They might catch Dendi anyway, though. He's in trouble now. He's in a lot of trouble. BKB comes out. They'll focus him down. The Eclipse was thrown out as well just for Dendi. And he ghost walks. Sentry's there, though. They'll get him. Now Puppy next in line, most likely. Surrounded, isolated, and brought down. Defensively sleeps himself. Back up arrives. It comes in the form of a boat with a boat. A hook in from Funic as well. They found two. Can they bring them down? Familiars have arrived. Aircraft assistance is in the area. They've got some backup, but now the TPL comes. Trixie will live. Only a two for one so far. Decent for Fnatic. Three for one now because the clockwork falls and Havos desperately trying to pursue No Tail, who looks to be dead. One stun hits. Two stuns hit. Nope, no stuns. Do you see the range on that stun? That, that was ridiculous. Like, yeah, that was pretty big. Well, when then he died, at least he forced the BKBs out as well as Eclipse, and that was a sign to go from Na'Vi. That was a really good fight from Fnatic, and it still only ended in a 2 for 3. And they'd use the Eclipse, they'd use the double BKB. I mean, not bad for them, but ultimately, they didn't kill Havost or Kuroki, and they got a lot of gold. Kuroki has 3,000 gold. Assault Caress next? I mean, he's filthy rich. Yeah, why not? I, I really like that item with the Zeus Strat, especially. Like, you have all these summons, now you've got minus armor on buildings. You can just, you can just take base instantly if you win a team fight near them. Dendi's smoked up. He has his BOTs, can TP on familiars, and Bane closely in tow. They are going for the ancient stack, but doesn't look like anyone's there. They yeah, might catch it. Trixie, it was though. cleared at some point here. Uh, did the Luna take it down? X Torrent's gonna fly. They found fly, and just <laughs> sniped by Kuroki. <laughs> I mean, what more is there to say? Visit familiar Zimba. Oh no, he might die though. That would be a good trade for, for, for Fnatic. But he turns around. He says, "No tail. What you doing, brother?" Not enough, though, but the backups come, and this time it will be a full-on head team fight without an Eclipse. That the wall drop. That's a great grip, but Era's not dead yet. Havos pursues him out, should be falling with one more cleave. Just hit the creeps, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Down he goes, and now a two-hero comes. Familiars as well for Funnick, and he's going to live, four stepping up to the high ground, and they'll find No Tail too. It'll be a full five-man wipe here. Fnatic going to fall. No Tail, maybe not. Four steps away to safety. Attempted torrent, but my, my goodness, boy, to Navi, and somehow through it all, Kuroki lived. And He's tanky. He has 1800 HP. That's a visage. Yeah, that's a visage. And 3800 armor, or uh, gold rather, armor. Jesus, that would be a lot of armor. That was a really nice grip from Puppy, though. He died in the process, but three, at, four seconds he got off there. Right. As soon as DK uses stun, he just immediately grips uh, the Luna. That was a little bit of a slow backing from Darkseer. And yeah, Dark Tutor has just not had the biggest impact in this game. Zero, four, and seven on Trixie. Yeah, he has his minus. Yeah, he has his mech. It's 28 minutes in, though. And to be honest, they don't. Navi's heroes are not that bad. Like, Dark is not that good against them. There's nobody that has, like, a big R you want to take over. There's no anti mage for this team, no Luna. The wall just feels like it's not going to do that much. And Kunkka's great at killing off illusions. Mm -hmm. got, they've got a lot of uh, Forge Spirits, Familiars, the summons that are not affected by walls. So, yeah, Darkseer really, I mean, it seemed like an odd pick from Fnatic, and, and we're really seeing why. It's not even good versus their carries, too. It's very good if you pick up Luna, because you can get Luna in the images, but Luna's on their team. If you get a Kunkka, it doesn't get the Tidebringer. So it's like, eh. Yeah. I mean, it just, yeah, the, the, the Darkseer just, 
I mean, the one thing that Darkseer is great at as an offlaner is just out-farming the enemy offlaner and getting more golden experience, especially if he's stacking and officially farming the jungle. But Trixie had quite a few deaths before picking up the Midas, and he also was a bit slow to rotate to the jungle, so it feels like he just hasn't had enough impact. They also don't have a combo for it either. Like, they, they don't have anything to follow up, even if he gets a nice vacuum wall. They don't have, like, a torrent boat or even, like, a tornado or... Eclipse is okay in theory, and maybe once Luna gets mm -hmm. Manta style, it's okay, but... Even then, it, it's lackluster. There's no Magnus here. There's no Tidehunter. There's no huge combo partner. Yep, Luna's got his next item. He has his Yasha, but still number four in terms of net worth. Kuroki is 600 gold ahead of Luna. He almost has AC. Perfect item to get on a Visage, like I was mentioning earlier. This is, this is just going to allow them to break the base. Mm -hmm. Fnatic are going to be forced into a fight. Now, the good news for Fnatic is this time they do have Eclipse. Well, it's they not did not in the last team. It's fight. not only that it helps them push, they can also just kill heroes straight up in BKB. That's true. That, which is really scary. Oh, Hookshot's found no tail. He wanted to go scouting, but he will force death out. Nicely done. Funic, no. Oh, now the fight breaks out for real. They focus Puppy. They don't want the Fiend script to come out here, but he gets mech. He defensively sleeps himself. He's still alive. Arrow's BKB is being wasted, but now he gets up the Eclipse doing decent, very good damage, actually. Now the splash coming through for the Glaze. He gets pushed back. Can he bring anyone down? Kuroki's alive. Funic's alive. Nobody's died. Now Era. Triple familiar stun. Kuroki jams it in and lives to tell the tale. Unbelievable. Unfriggin' believable. What a visage player. And he lives. That is just outrageous visage play. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Mike growing his hero. Mike growing the familiars. Bringing down the Luna. And even Puppy, great defensive sleep there. Really wasted some precious seconds of Fnatic's time. Yep. I mean, Fnatic pretty much did everything that they could in that fight, too. They were just a little bit too far behind in terms of going by a little. I mean, 14,000. Poor Fnatic getting run over in game one. This is going to be racked for them and probably the probably the game. It feels like the beginning of the end at this point. There's just really no item progression at all. 31 minutes in for Luna to have these items. Very lackluster. And the Dragonite even more so. I mean, not even close to a Shadow Blade or a, a big damage item at this point. Yeah, meanwhile, Kunkka very close to Daedalus. Already has his Crystalis, 2,300 gold in the bank. And they have the AC now on the Visage, by the way. That, this is, that was without the Assault Curse. And that is... For the amount of physical damage Navi have, you really can't underestimate how powerful Trixie. it is. Now Trixie, X, Torrance there, and he gets pulled right back into a cleave, to a cold snap, and the grip, or sorry, the, the brain snap as well. Brings him down with ease. They get the racks, and they'll take a Trixie as well. I must say, uh, Havos Kunga, Kunga was really good this game, too. It was. It was, like, extremely good. He he went a greedy build, but he still came to team fights. He didn't mix miss any X Torrance that I saw. I really like giving him a hero like that. You know, a life stealer, Kunkka, sure it's a less traditional Havost hero, but a hero that can fight a lot early. A hero that doesn't need huge items to contribute. Just come to the fight, X Torrent, throw in the boat. He did a lot of work. Yeah, that was. I just, a much, I think for Navi, Big Thing is a much better draft than their last series. It was a good draft. They had good team fight, they had good AoE, and they had really good lanes too, because they just completely shut down Trixie. Like, there Trixie nothing did nothing Trixie all could game. really do in that lane. He, ha he should have gone Woods a bit sooner, but. I mean, ultimately, I feel like that's where Fnatic fell short as well, is they just didn't have the best trap. The Darkseer in particular really did not seem like a good pick. It did not, but they also lost their other lanes, too. I mean, what other options were there at that point in the draft? Timbersaw? Timbersaw was out there. I think Timbersaw would have been a lot better Timbersaw would have been a lot better, choice. I think. And I felt like they lacked damage as well. A lot of their damage was Eclipse. That was the main damage for them, and Eclipse is not really that good when you've got Necro summons and, you know, just a very tanky team in general. That's mm -hmm. Like, there were no squishy supports this game. Timbersaw would have died, too, in the offlane, so you can't really blame, blame, blame Trixie that much. But, yeah, the draft, it but was... later on, I felt like he could have done more. Right. Darkseer just didn't do anything. He had a mech, but it, it didn't do that much. Yeah. But they tried to, I think, take a page from Sigma's book. They saw what worked for them yesterday, and it just felt very short on the execution, as well as it was kind of a half-assed draft. Um, whereas... It, lo it looked like Navi learned from yesterday. They adapted. They banned Pugna immediately in the second phase. And yes, that, that, that was key. If they had let him through, yeah. it would have been a much different game. Right. I think maybe, maybe, why didn't they just that. pick Pugna earlier? Because they can, they can substitute a Dragon Knight for a Death Prophet instead. Yeah. And Pugna is really the key hero in that in that. I mean, pool. even maybe not getting the Veno and getting a different support. I, th I don't think the Veno is necessary to run the Dragon Knight-Pugna combo. Right. I think that... They there would have been some supports left at that point that are decent. Yeah, and then once they, they looked like they were committed to the strategy, but they couldn't actually get the heroes that they wanted, yeah. and they still like kind of went for the same thing. Like yeah, like they went for the Luna, but the right. Luna went for without like, the Pugna, you can't you can't push. 
you know, it kind of reminded me of like when LGD loses a game. You see that like sometimes they're going, they'll just go for mass BKBs and they'll try to five man all the time, but they just get completely outmaneuvered and outfarmed, and then they lose. Like that's when LGD, when right. they're losing, that's what happens. And this seemed like the same thing from Fnatic. That's that's not really their playstyle though. This yeah. this sort of strategy, they need to just go what works for them. Sigma used what worked for them. Fnatic tried to use what worked for Sigma, not worked for them. Not working for them. Guys, that's going to wrap up game number one, but it is a best of three. Navi now one game away from advancing to the win loser's bracket, uh, round number two, the loser bracket finals. Of course, I'm LD, he's Merlini. We'll be back after a short break.